Mac Mini for music production. How powerful is it really? Well, here we have the i5 version of the 6 core, so it's not the i7. Instead of giving us 12 cores in Logic, it gives us 6 cores. Uh, let us see what we can do here. I'm gonna start with 75. Um, I'm gonna start with 75 tracks and just remind you here is what a track consists of. It consists of an EXS24 and it consists of a ring shift modulator, it consists of a compressor and it consists of a channel EQ and it consists of a space designer. So quite a bit going on per track, right? Per track. And uh, all of these events hit at the same time, these three notes, right? So it's not like in most music you would have that more evenly distributed, but it is a common stress test and it's called uh, Evans Logic Multicore Benchmark. So uh, this test has been around for a while. So, and we can monitor in Logic by clicking on the CPU here. We click on this. This is going to open up this here, right? So we have, let's see what we got going here. All right. So as you can see here, there's a little speaker built in here. So that's not gonna do anything for audio where on a MacBook Pro, you can listen and enjoy music at much better quality level than on an iPhone, for example, and that's not even that bad. Um, um, I'm not involving my universal audio or anything. This is straight uh, out of Mac OS playback. So here's our load. We got some space for improvement. So I'm going to start adding some tracks here. I apologize for the shaky camera. And in essence, you know, we can Turn that off, that's not very interesting music. All right, so we got 70, 72, 75. This is already pretty good. This is already a pretty good load here. Like this for about 10 minutes, 86 tracks. This is about where the 3.1 gigahertz uh, quad core starts running into issues. And if you look at the allocation here in hyper-threading, that's eight cores, eight virtual co cores versus 12 virtual cores here. After much back and forth, I'm settling here for 134 instances of the situation going on here. This is pretty cool. So I think for logic, not having the i7 hurts us a little bit. Not having this hyper-threading. Yeah, so here I'm at 79 tracks. There we go. 80, 81, 82, 83. Hey, look, that's what we do on a rainy day, right? Instead of actually making music, we're doing benchmarks. 85, yep, that works. By doing this in test, it kind of like distributes it among the cores more efficiently. I'm at 87. Yeah. And remember this test doesn't load any samples, so it's not depending on the RAM or on the storage that you have. This is really just CPU, how much data can it process in real time. So this seems good. We had 87 tracks, not bad. I mean, keep the price uh, in mind. Um, and the good thing about the Mac Mini is you can connect all of these devices here, no problem. You have four Thunderbolt ports, you have an HDMI port, uh, you have two regular USB sized ports. So that's where it beats the MacBook Pro, uh, which has only four th uh, Thunderbolt 3 ports, and then you have to get dongles or maybe a, um, a dock like I did here for my laptop adapter, right? So we got, those are the three essential dongles. So that's quite a good amount of dongles, you know, to connect all your devices. So for that, the Mac mini is a much more price efficient solution. Um, now, if you deck out the Mac mini with 32 gigs, 512 of storage and the i7, you're getting into the 2000s, right? So at that point, 
might be worth getting the 2.6 2018 uh, i7 six core MacBook Pro and you'd be getting a kick-ass second screen to this which is great which could be a mixing window. So we've been running at 87 tracks for several minutes now. The only thing you can hear is maybe the rain. No fan noise. This is excellent. Uh, even though the MacBook Pro pa packs a lot more punch performance, the fans would come on. So this is excellent. Okay, I am at 130 tracks right now and I'm really hearing the fans. That's probably 6,000. Listen to that. All right. So fan noise means less noise when you have the machine in your room. All right, I'm at 89, 90, here we go, 91, 92, still no fan noise. I think the computer kind of like adjusts and distributes more evenly. 93, so we're now above the performance of a 2017, a 3.1 gigahertz machine quad core, uh, which is eight virtual cores in logic. Here we are on an i5 3.0 gigahertz which overclocks to over uh, four gigahertz. But no fan so far, just a smooth, even distribution. Let's see, okay, so here I managed to do a system overload at 95 tracks. So all in all, uh, from the price point, the, connect the connectivity options, even an i5 Mac mini is fantastic for entry level music production with room to grow. If you want a bit more performance, you may want to consider the i7 model. It's about 200 bucks more. I think that might be worth it. You'd be getting 12 cores here, um, especially in Logic. It's, it would really utilize that. And here we'll be doing a real world test, how it performs with my audio interface. And we got a good amount of plugins that we're running um, internally. So I could take the, the it's only the aux, the uh, Universal Audio Oxide tape that we're adding, which is done by the Universal Audio interface. Everything else that you see here is done by uh, the Mac Mini. Um, it's a fairly small project. By the way, it's the meters CC strut that I'm jamming over and kind of like replayed just for fun, for practice. Underutilized here, those are also not many tracks. Um, got some horns, got a guitar, we got a studio drummer, uh, we got a bass line. So really not that much happening and that's also shown here. So there is a lot of room to grow. We just want to make sure that it doesn't choke up on small projects. If we add, we got Neutron on all of them, but if we add Ozone, it's a mastering plugin, somewhat resource hungry, yeah, that also doesn't put a huge dent into the system. So um, you can definitely produce with this. Let me give you the full track. <laughs> 